Hi, thank you everybody. Um, so I was asked to make a feminist statement relating to the show and I prepare a written statement that would be easier for me to a little just speak off the cuff. Um, feminism has given me a new awareness and a language to conceptualize artworks. The feminist strategy erased the boundary between personal and public. It enabled me to make an easy transition in my work from biographical to social content. I moved from Bangkok to New York City in 1973 at the end of the Vietnam War. Although my childhood memory of the war has, was short, it effect was long lasting. My view on sex, money, and women has been profoundly affected. Thai women were not just grandmother, mother, sister, aunt, teacher, or doctor. They were looked upon as prostitutes. During the Vietnam War, my parents were medical physicians assigned to work at a northeastern border hospital near Vietnam. My experience of America started there in Thailand. It came via Playboy magazine, girly transparencies, noisy jet fighters flying over my house, music, food, and VD centers next to go-go bars at vacation spots created to accommodate the U.S. military presence. Back then, Thai women were also casualties of this military conflict. As in my mother's story of her daily work that included mending the uteruses of bar girls injured from having sex with American soldiers. After the Vietnam War, the leftover sex industry was disguised as legitimate tourist industry. And in 1990s, Thailand declared itself as the epicenter of the AIDS crisis. During the time of global economy, we have seen the explosion of sex tourism and human trafficking. Images of male order brides, escort, and massage services appear in the internet and in classified ads, making art its way to make sense of these experiences. The artworks I'm showing here are exploring a creating a feminine identity through found magazine images, historic object, Eastern religious motifs, and classified advertisement. Um, these photo montage sort of homage also to knowingly to Martha Rosler and other pop artists. Um, start with the number 21, Victory of the Goddess. You can see the uh, Thai temple painting in the background and Playboy Girls of the World, Shia Moen, she was the Taiwan highest paid model according to the Playboy magazine in 1971. She was also a painter, appeared in films, and has written two novels. And image number 22 and number 23 is uh, Prince Palace, 1965. That's the title. It's also called Friendly Pornography. Um, here I explore the American male culture and its influence on the Thai via recollections of my early childhood during the Vietnam War. Employing American military weapons and artillery, the seductive images of Western women to represent the invading modern culture that was visiting upon Thailand landscape. Images sourced are from Playboy um, magazine, August 1965, F-16 fighting Falcon aircrafts, and family portrait. The number 24 is called Raw Miss Universe, or Friendly Capitalism. It's a portrait of Apasara Hong Sukun. The 1965 Thai Miss Universe is smiling over the bursting dollars. A damn cartoon panel from Walt Disney, Uncle Scrooge, in only a poor old man. An MK-82 bomber used in South Vietnam dropping erotic bomb of magenta orchids over the cum gushing silver dollar. This is the birth of Asian beauty as universal commodity and the coming of American purchasing power. This is from this, um, different pieces from the series of Le Femme en Route and Fever series, um, which is um, represent of inkjet figure taken from the Thai postage stamp that you see on the lower right. Um, I, cut out these images and do digitals, uh, make digitals in, um, work. And I place these women, the figurine, inside metaphorical icons, such as sapphire bubbles and um, diamonds who represent precious commodity. On the upper left, the ruby scape, it's a digital print, and the background is from a medical slide of autoimmune disease, which also um, acting as a landscape background. The number 26 is the piece in the show here. It's a plexi light box. 
Number 27, so two images from Ruby Chain or a red stream. Uh, there are 300 strass pear shaped crystals with inkjet prints transferred manually on crystal with red fruit dye and acrylic medium and various red jade beads attaching to 10 foot metal bicycle chain with nickel pins, wire, and Christmas light. And the ship fever is um, illustrated in the catalog. Uh, it's a homage to women workers in the international tourist industry. And it is a visual analogy between historical middle passage ships and the seating arrangement of modern passenger airline, airplane. Replicated figures of women in traditional dresses taken from the Thai postage stamp. And these figures represent images of hospitality and wholesomeness that are the commodity through which industry attract and sell services. This is um, my uh, collage series, Works on Paper. And they are taken from six ads from the Village Voice. Uh, there are, these are telephone numbers from the, the classify ads. So I call them working, uh, working numbers, phone numbers, work numbers. And if you notice uh, the font that say Asia sort of um, sexualized font in um, the ad in the back, the same ad from the Village Voice, and also pseudonym, the pseudonyms of, um, next to image of Asian women in the, uh, the massage ad in the back of the magazine. Same from the same sources. So these uh, small scale mixed media collages on craft paper and water color pencil drawing are my response to the Village Voice Asian sex ads. The advertisement are colorful portraits of Asian women for sexual consumption. The ad sells their service by employing stereotype, giving pseudo exotic names to the women and a strange cropping of their body, framing faces, and um, I transform these images, or rather transfigure them into goddesses. I'm using element of horror and humor found in Himalayan religious painting and Asian horror cinema, as well as following stream of consciousness through free association with other cutout pictures from jewelry and flowers catalog. The Himalayan art, um, following the Buddhist teaching, or Dharma, is portrayed in Himalayan paintings. There are tools for meditation to the path of enlightenment. These paintings portray awesome deity with peaceful form, other with frightful expressions and sceneries. Some are floating on clouds and seated on flowers. The wrathful ones are surrounded by fire, bejewels with strings of pearls and decapitated heads. These, de these deities show their power of compassion in colorful, fantastic, cosmic battle against obstacles such as hatred, obsession, pride, jealousy, and ignorance. This is my latest series, which is um, the source of the images come from Christie Auction Sales catalog. Here I explore the um, idea of uh, women through material objects. And the description and pedigree of the seat sales object has as much present as um, the anonymous person or the object themselves. And the title of this series called The Property of a Lady it is a drawing of feminine persona and is an anonymous wealthy person whose material inheritance is representing her identity. In this context, colonial reference come to mind these jewels are made from precious stones procured from European empire expansions. The stones, some famous with legend or lore, were acquired through walls, military conquests, and trading, changing hands from kingdom to the subcontinent, Africa, Europe, and the New World. So there are um, the material is shaped graphite on metallic powder with acrylic medium and graphite wash on vellums. So that's it. Thank you.